Hey kids, welcome to the Doodle Place. Amber here, thanks for joining everyone who is on with me today. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a really simple, really easy, fun, relaxing project. Um, we're gonna be doing a great big tall layer cake on a stand with uh, frosting and decorations. The sky's the limit on what you wanna do with the cake. Um, and this can be either a really quick a uh, fast lesson and you can just take a few minutes and be done or you can go ahead and take as much time as you want. So um, it's gonna be a lot of fun, really easy, really relaxing and it's a uh, fun one for all age groups um, from little tiny kids all the way up through adults and everyone in between. So I am looking forward to doing this project with you today. Um, for supplies, I'm not even sure exactly what I wanna use. Um, so I sort of brought a lot of stuff over um, to the table with me. Um, so I have krill, krill, um markers, which I might end up using. I brought um, my construction paper crayons. Regular crayons are fine too. And I brought over um, my watercolor paints, which I may or may not use. I'm not quite sure. I have a pencil and an eraser and a Sharpie marker. So Whatever supplies you have is gonna be fine. You could even just do this with a piece of paper and a pencil and just do a really cool drawing of a cake. Um, and then you can use whatever. I did think about getting out my tempera paints, um, but I just, for some reason, I didn't. But if you have tempera paints or a thicker type of paint, uh, that will work really well for this, um, for this project. So definitely use those if you have them on hand and feel like painting. All right, so I just have a regular piece of paper and I got kind of a sketch of a cake started. Um, I may or may not actually keep this. I might flip this over and do a different style, but um, there's a doodle of a cake. And then I also have a scratch paper. Um, and so I might do a couple of designs here as well, just to kind of see what exactly it is I wanna do before I start painting. So go ahead and compile your supplies um, whatever you're gonna use. So whether you know, you're know you using crayons or paints, um, take a few minutes if maybe you forgot something. Uh, don't forget if you're painting, you'll need a little jar of water and either an old dish towel or some paper towels or something. Um, markers, if you're using markers. Uh, if you're using any kind of markers um, or especially Sharpies, you might wanna put an extra piece of paper underneath your paper so it doesn't bleed through and get on the table. Um, I learned that the hard way. So, um, but yeah, you don't really need too much for this lesson. Go ahead and uh, gather your supplies and we are gonna switch over here into the drawing part in just a minute. Um, I will give you guys just another minute or two to get your supplies and for those who might be joining a little bit late. So I do suggest um, if you need ideas and inspiration, what I did was I just did a quick Google search for, um, I think the term I searched was layer cake painting. So if you just do a Google search or an image search of layer cake painting or cake painting, um, you know, or art pro cake art project, something like that, you will see so many cool ideas. Um, so go ahead and maybe do a quick search if you need some inspiration. And I am going to switch back over here make sure my paper is straight and zoomed in enough so you guys can see. I think that looks pretty good. All right. So what I'm gonna do is just, while you guys are maybe finishing up getting your supplies or um, looking up on Google for some inspiration, I'm just gonna trace my outline here uh, with a black Sharpie so you guys can see it a little better. But um, don't feel like you need to follow along with anything I'm doing right now. All right, kids, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, you saw the doodle I did of my layer cake. Um, that is just one idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out for you just a couple more ideas um, of types of cakes that you might wanna try as far as um, 
the layers before we get into the details and frosting and all of that fun stuff. So let me show you just a couple more ideas here that you may want to consider. So this one, of course, is more of a, a traditional layer cake on a stand, kind of like a wedding cake. Um, and it's got like a fun little scallop here uh, on the tray. So this is something that you might like to do. Some other ideas, let me just flip that over. And don't feel like you need to be drawing along with me right now. Um, we'll get into the drawing part in just a second. I just want you to have some ideas of what you want to draw so you know what it is exactly you wanna do. This one I'll do a little different style of a stand. I'll just do a real basic one. So for this cake, you might wanna do something that's more, um, let's just do something kind of funny here. You might just want a super tall, giant cake, all the same width of layers. Kind of like that. Then you could put fun frosting and designs and whatnot um, on that style. Uh, you might want to do just a single layer. In fact, I'll turn this uh, landscape. You might want to do kind of a fun like a more wide and skinny cake. And then you can put all sorts of fun decorations on the top and frosting and whatnot. Um, what other styles of cake could we do? All sorts of cakes. You can just go crazy with your imagination, but Let's do one that's kind of like, there's one layer. And then this one is almost more like a meringue. So you could do something fun that's not even really technically cake, but more like a meringue or a big giant blob of frosting or something. Maybe that's whipped cream. So hopefully that gives you some ideas for what um, you want to do for your cake. All right, so I'm going to just switch back um, to the original doodle I had here of this cake. In fact, you know what? I'm going to grab a, a fresh sheet of paper so you can follow along from the start. So now that you've decided on what style of cake you want to do, let's go ahead and figure out where is the top and the bottom of your page. So before you start drawing your cake, you're going to want to figure out, okay, what kind of decorations am I going to want on the top of my cake? So if I want to have, let's say, for example, like a great big flower on the top of my cake as a really cool um, decoration, or maybe I want to have, um, who knows, just some big, crazy, cool thing. If I end my cake right up here, if that's the top, I'm not going to have much room to do that. So think about what kind of cool decoration or design you want on the top of your cake. If all you're doing is frosting, you know, if, if all you're gonna do is just a little bit of frosting, then you can bring your, your cake all the way close to the top of your page. But if you're wanting to do a big design, leave enough room. Um, so I'll go ahead and leave about a hand width. And I'm gonna make a dot in the middle of my page, more or less, doesn't have to be exact, about where about how far down I want the top of my cake to be from the top of my papers uh, or my page. So go ahead and make your dot. And once you've decided on that, do kind of the same thing at the bottom of your paper. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me scoop just a little bit. Um, think about the kind of cake platter that you want. So if you want like a really tall, sorry, I'm trying to scoot this camera back just a tad. My paper is like so huge. Um, 
If you want a really tall cake platter that comes up to here, then you need to think about that. Or maybe you want your cake to not even be on a platter. You might want your cake to just be on a really flat plate way down here at the bottom. So think about what kind of plate or platter your cake is sitting on. Is it sitting on a real tall, fancy one? Or is it just on a flat, low plate? So I want mine to be tall and fancy. Um, and I probably want mine to, you know, be about this tall. So I'm gonna think of where the bottom of my page is, how tall I want my plate or platter or cake stand. And I'll make another dot, a very light dot, more or less, just right there in the middle. So go ahead and make your dot. And then once you're ready, let's go ahead and draw the cake stand before we draw the cake. So there are lots of different cake stands you can do. Um, the one I did here, I got a little fancy with it and I made you know the scalloped edge, put some circles, put a pedestal column as its base, and you could do something like that. Here's a more simple one. You can make the column fat or skinny, whatever you wanna do. And the, the um, actual platter portion, you could give cool designs, um, all sorts of neat things that you could do. You could also make a really wide stand or have the legs over here. Um, the sky is the limit. So use your imagination on what kind of stand that you wanna do. I also did this one. So if you're doing your um, as a landscape, this one is more really low and wide. And that's just a quick sloppy one. So go ahead and start drawing your cake stand. You can either just freehand a straight line and make sure that it, give it a finger or two in between the edges of your page. I like to sometimes use the edge of a paper um, just to help with that line. So I'm gonna just put the edge of a scratch paper right up where my line or my dot is. And I don't wanna bring it all the way to the edge. I wanna leave a little gap. So I might even make two dots to show, remind myself how fat do I want my cake stand to be. That looks pretty good. So And you can be drawing with a pencil or a crayon or a marker, or even just jumping right on in with your paintbrush. I'm using a Sharpie marker because that's the easiest thing for you guys to see on the camera. And Sharpies are easy to draw with, but you can be drawing with anything. It doesn't matter at all. All right, so there's my line. And I want to come down and find, where's the base? I'll, I'll do that right about here. And I wanna make sure I'm about in the middle. So there's the base. Now all I have to do is go ahead and connect these two. So I'm gonna decide on what kind of shape I want my um, cake platter to be. So let's see. I'm trying to think of what kind of mood I'm in for a cake platter. Do I want fancy and frilly or do I want plain and simple? I think I'll do fancy and frilly today. I'll do another one like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect at all. This um, project is very colorful and whimsical and fun. So you almost want it to not be perfect. You want it to be a little bit different. See how this one's skinny and comes down too far? Um, it doesn't even matter at all. All right, so I'm going to make this part a little bit taller than my last one. And I think I'm actually gonna give it some shape. I'm just trying to make sure whatever I do on one side is pretty close to what I do on the other side. Not exactly, but, and up. All right, so there's my cake platter. If yours looks totally different or maybe yours didn't turn out exactly how you wanted, you know what, neither did mine and that is fine. That's what art is all about. And then once you have it in, 
go ahead and add some fun designs and decorations to the cake platter. Let's see. What do I want to do? I might do some fun little upside down hearts. could I do? How about a little shape like that? We'll do a fun little little doodle there. added some kind of curved lines just to indicate the curve of that pedestal shape. I'll go ahead and add one more little detail. Little tiny dot. Just give it some pop. All right guys. Are you ready to move on? If you want to, this is an optional step, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a line just to show that this is sitting on a table. You don't have to do this, but, and you can decide how uh, high you want the table or low. I'll put mine just about right there. And of course, I'm not gonna make the line in front of uh, my pedestal, but it's gonna run behind it. So it's gonna start on one side Go all the way up to your cake stand and then stop, jump over it, and then start again on the other side. All right, there's my table. Oop, bump that up a little bit, okay. All right kids, so let's go ahead and jump on to the next step and start making your cake. Have you guys decided what style you wanna do? Or are you gonna do, um, you know, something like this, where it has the layers that are getting smaller and smaller. Are you gonna do something that's more kind of tall and crazy and fun like this, or maybe just two or three? Maybe just a single layer, or something that's just made up that doesn't even really look like a real cake, but just, just for fun. And remember, you can get lots of ideas if you do a Google search for um, layer cake painting. All right, let me adjust this camera just a tad bit. And we're gonna jump in. So I'm not sure exactly what kind of cake I wanna do. So I'm just gonna start drawing and we'll see where it goes. I do think that I want my cake to come out about this far not quite to the edge of my stand. So I'm going to put a little dot about a finger's width in. See that? So I put my finger and a little dot. And then the same on this side. And that's going to be how far this layer on the bottom goes. And I'm trying to decide if I want my layers to be real short and a whole bunch of them stacked up or if I want real tall fat layers. And you know what, because I wanna do fun frosting and sprinkles, I think I'm gonna do a real tall fat layer so that there's lots of room to put designs. So I'm gonna go nice and tall. And you're gonna make two lines on either side. Now see how this line went a little higher than that line? So I'm gonna try and make this one match a little bit. Once you're pretty happy with the lines and they look about the same height, you're gonna draw a line to connect them. And you don't want the corners to be real sharp. 
I don't want it to look like it's um, a brick. I want it to look like it's a cake. So I'm going to make the corners rounded just a little bit. So see how I rounded them just a tiny bit? And then I can go ahead and connect those. And I, I don't care about it being perfect, so I'm just going to do this freehand. Now this, I could even just leave this alone and not do anything else because it's so big. I could do all sorts of fun frosting and flowers and fruits and sprinkles and decorations and then something big and cool on top of this or maybe a couple cherries or some whipped cream and a cherry on top. I think, hmm, what do you kids think I should do? It is hard to decide. So many choices. I think I'm going to do... You know what, I think I'll leave this. I'm not gonna do any more layers because I wanna have some space in the background to put some um, wallpaper. Like their cake is in a room and there's cool wallpaper in the background or maybe a window. So this is where I had originally decided I thought I was gonna go you know, bring my cake up here, but I changed my mind. I'm gonna leave it this low. Now, if you did want to do more layers, all you have to do is Go in a couple of fingers, or however much you want, a little or a lot, it's up to you, and just do another layer. And then go in a little bit more and do another layer. It is up to you. So go ahead and draw in as many layers as you want. And remember, make sure to give yourself enough space at the top for whatever fancy decoration or background you want. You can tell I have a sweet tooth today because we're painting a cake. Lately, I have just been wanting to eat sweets, cakes and desserts and cookies and all sorts of yummy things. So cake was on my mind. All right, guys, once you have your layers drawn in, and if I'm getting a little bit ahead of you, if you're still working on your layers, don't even worry. That is totally fine. Let me see if I can scoot this page just a little. There we go. That's a little better, a little easier to see. Okay, so once you have your layers, let's start doing the fun part, the decorations, the frosting, all of that good stuff. Um, I think that I'm going to do a strawberry cake with a blob of whipped cream right here. Oh, you know what? Do I want strawberry or cherry? You know what? I'm going to do both. I'm going to do some strawberries here, the big blob of whipped cream, and a big cherry on top. So let's see. I'm going to start drawing first some blobs of frosting, some whipped cream. I'm going to start at the very, very edge. And I'm just going to make some swirly shapes, kind of like whipped cream. So obviously mine doesn't look like real whipped cream, but that's okay. I want my cake to just look sort of like it's very fanciful and fun, a fun design. If you want something that looks a little more um, real, you know, you could do something that looks kind of more like, like that. If you want something that looks like real blobs of frosting. Everyone will be a little different. And you could put some lines in it. So two different styles. This one's more uh, realistic and this one's more whimsical. All right, guys, go ahead and finish the top layer of your frosting or, or um, cream if you're doing that. Now this part is super fun. When I was a kid in about third and fourth grade, this was one of my most favorite things to draw were fun layer cakes like this. And part of the reason was because I loved to draw frosting because you can just make it look like it's so yummy just pouring over the cake. 
what you want to do is just find a spot however far down on the side of your cake I'll start mine about here and you're gonna swoop in and then drop it down and then go up and then down a little see how I'm doing that there's no rhyme or reason however you want it to look just make it like there's frosting just blobbing and pouring down all sorts of yummy frosting covering your cake and you can do just a little bit or you can have it um, down covering more of the cake or if you want to you don't even have to do this you can just make it so that the whole cake is frosted with all one solid color maybe you can you know instead of doing this maybe you want to do diagonal stripe frosting just for fun and make each a different color it doesn't look as realistic or natural but it sure is fun so you could do something crazy like that um, or maybe you want there to be you know let's say this is all one solid color what's all one solid frosting and you might want to put little sprinkles on there Now I'm doing it with a Sharpie. It would probably be a lot easier to do this with a paintbrush or just take a colored marker and just color the sprinkles on. Or you can have both. So you know what? I'm gonna put some sprinkles um, on mine too, but I'm gonna do it later. I'm not gonna do it with a Sharpie. I'm just gonna do it with paint or a marker. All right, so I'm thinking, what else do I want it? To, I'm still debating if I want it to be cherries or strawberries. And you know what? I think I'm gonna do cherries. I was leaning towards strawberries, but I changed my mind. Because as artists, we get to change our mind in the middle of our project just because we want to. I'm gonna put some cherries. Right in the middle. Of where each little whipped cream blob dips down. Now, you might wanna do something totally, totally different than fruit or cherries. You might be putting, I mean, who knows? The sky's the limit. You might be doing a lollipop stuck in there. I mean, you could literally just go crazy with your imagination. So you could do a fun lollipop stuck in your cake. You could do, um, if you don't want to do fruit, you could top it with, um, I'll show you how you can do a strawberry. A strawberry is pretty much a triangle that has its corners rounded. See how it's basically just a triangle with rounded, and then you put little dots on it, and then it's fun little topper. So you could put strawberries, um of course cherries what else oh my goodness you could do candles well that candle was a little fat now if you're doing candles and you want to do a flame i make my flames to look like a drop of water or a teardrop And then I go and put another little one right in the middle. And then you can decorate your candles if you're doing candles. You can do them the same, you can do different. Now, of course, instead of fruits and candles, you might wanna do flowers if you're doing a really pretty wedding cake or just a pretty, just a, a cake that's pretty it doesn't have to be for anything particular but you might want to do um, you know some little flowers
or you might want to get crazy and do some big, huge, awesome flowers. flowers, whatever, fruits, candies, um, lollies. I think they call them lollies in England. I don't know what you just call it a candy here, but let's see. And then you could do the fun little wrapper. Now, some cakes even have tall candles that are like sparklers. And some fun little dots. So you can go crazy on your cake. Whatever you think of, just give it a try. So those are some ideas. Um, or you could do it very, very, very simple if you just maybe wanted to do a solid and maybe you wanted to make it look like there's more frosting on the sides. You can kind of put some little lumps just here and there and just kind of, just to kind of make it look like there's all sorts of frosting on there. Just put kind of wavy lines here and there if that's what you're going for. And then maybe we'll do just one simple cherry on this one. So you just go ahead and finish up your cake with whatever great idea you have. Don't be afraid to try whatever comes to mind. Remember, you can always just grab another piece of paper and start over. So don't be scared to try out something, even if it's a crazy idea. So I'll go ahead and finish up mine while you finish up yours. cherry isn't very round is it oh well and then I think I'm gonna do one big blob of whipped cream and then one more cherry on the top of that just for fun decide which way I want the stem to go. So I'm gonna start coloring mine or painting. If you're still drawing, that's fine. Hmm. I'm trying to decide if I want to color with crayons, markers, or paint. And since I did Sharpie, which um, the watercolor will not wash away. I might, I might just go ahead and throw in some watercolor paint on this. And then I might come back in with some marker for some details later. 
Okay, so for my cake color, so I'm gonna have red cherries. I think I'll do pink frosting, so I'll do a yellow cake. If there's um, a color that's in your way from last time you painted with watercolor, all you have to do, just get it wet and wipe it up with a paper towel because you don't want that other color. If I tried to mix my yellow in with that blue, I would have a green cake, wouldn't I? And that is not what I want. It might turn out okay, but that's not what I want. So clean that up. All right, and now, now I'm back in business. And remember, if you're doing watercolor, the way to get a lighter color is just simply use more water. And this would be just as good if I had used um, uh, markers or crayons. It really doesn't matter uh, how you get your color on there. And you might not even be doing color. Maybe you're just drawing one and that's fine. And I'm not even being all that careful to stay in the lines. I want this painting to just feel really fun and carefree and whimsical and colorful. And if it kind of goes out of the lines, I think that'd make it even better, not worse. All right, there's my yellow cake. I want a really light pink frosting. Yeah, that's a little too blah. Hmm. I am not in love with that light pink, so I'm just going to let that dry, and I'm going to come back in later once it's dry enough, and I might color it with a marker, maybe that. And the cherries, this is going to be fun, bright red cherries. And I want this pretty dark because if you lighten red too much, do you guys know what color you get when you lighten red? I bet you guys guessed pink and that's right. So I'm gonna really load up my brush with a lot of the red paint so it's not too light. And the cherries, I'm being a little more careful to keep their shape, their nice round shape. How are you kids doing? How's your cake coming along? Are you liking how it's turning out? Is it making you hungry for yummy cake? All right, let's see. So my cherries have dried, sometimes with watercolor. After it dries, it dries a little lighter than you want. So you have to go back and add kind of a second layer of color. If you really want that to to be a rich color that pops. And I want that to be as red as red can get.
Okay, so I might try one more time to get this pink frosting, kind of the color I want before I try another medium. that dark. Just add a little more water. Oh, that's really dark. this to be kind of a like a mint green frosting up on top let's see I'm trying to mix the color I want I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get it exactly the right mint green but even if it's more of a turquoise that will be just fine because I love the color of turquoise. I cannot wait to see what colors you guys chose for your cakes. All right, so I think I'm gonna get this or this frosting wet a little bit first. Oops, I got some of that red bleeding in, but oh well. Just so that I can uh, get a nice smooth application so that it can be really light and well blended. Okay, so I'm gonna go in there with my greenish blue. a little too light so I'm just mixing some turquoise with a touch of yellow over here And see how it kind of mixed with the red? Sometimes when things happen that you didn't mean for it to happen, it doesn't even matter. It looks good. Okay. Add a little more. I didn't use watercolor paper. I just used a heavy um, drawing paper. So the watercolor doesn't behave quite as nice on this kind of paper. If it were watercolor paper, um, it would be a little more vibrant, easier to blend and it wouldn't be causing it to buckle, but that is fine. And then I think I'm gonna do for this down here, hmm. What do I wanna do for that? I am thinking. I'm just testing out some colors. I might even test it on this little sample here first before I decide for sure what I want to do. I could even do a light gray, in fact. That's, I think I'll do that. I'm just going to take black. Fine if it mixed a little tiny bit of that blue in there and I'm gonna get it really 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 wet so that it lightens it 
and does a light gray. Sometimes it's nice to have some of the elements of your picture not be super colorful. If you have a few parts of your picture that are more of like a plain color, like brown or gray or black, it can help the parts that are colorful to really stand out and get the attention. If every single thing on your painting is super colorful, it can almost be kind of hard to tell see which part you're trying to focus on. You don't, you know, it's everything is competing because it's all so colorful. So a darker or plainer color helps to just kind of ground the picture so that it, it gives a good foundation for the colorful parts to really stand out. Now, if you like it all to be colorful, that is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it and it looks great if it's all colorful. It just is um, two different styles and it's good to know how to use both styles so that you get the effect that you want. Like if I did this stand, let's say a bright purple, that would be fine and it would be really pretty and really cute. But if this is bright purple and this is yellow and this is pink and this is blue and this is red, it, it all kind of just competes with each other. So by doing this a gray, just a plain soft gray, the eye knows to go to the cake and the cake is what stands out. So. When you do a piece of art and you want to choose what it is that you want the viewer to focus on, kind of think about those things. I don't really want the person who's seeing my art today to focus on the stand. I want them to focus on this part of the cake. So I use bright, vibrant colors to bring the eye here. And then I kind of um, balance it out with a nice, soft, neutral color. If you're feeling brave, you can even try to put a little bit of a shadow, just slightly darker here and there on your stand or on your cake. And I think I'll leave those little hearts just like they are, um, just white. And then for the table stand, hmm, let's see. I may do a dark green. I want it to be a color, but I don't want it to fight with my cake. Either a dark green or a dark blue, one of the two. Let's see. So I'm just kind of mixing some colors into black until I get a nice gray color. I'm going to get some water on my brush. Let me scoot that up so you guys can see. So it's pretty much, that's a little too black. Let me add a little more green in there. There. Now you want to Make sure to bring your color off the page. You don't want to leave like little um, white spots on the corners. Make sure that you don't have any white blank spots, but bring that color all the way to the edge and run it right off the page. I'm using kind of a small brush for this. I'd get done quicker with a bigger brush, but it's all right. Okay, let me do this last little bit here. Make sure to get those white spots all covered up. The cool thing about watercolors, if you don't like a color, you can change it while it's on the paper, while it's still wet. Just smush some other color into it.
And you know, you can have one side a little bit lighter, the other side a little bit darker, and it might look like there's light here, and this part's a little more in shadow. And then you can't even put a little bit of a shadow under that stand if you want to. You might have to wait till it dries a little bit. And then if you decide that it's just too dark, take your paper towel and just smush it. I do this all the time when I use watercolors. If it's still too dark, even after smushing, get a little bit of water on your paper towel and scrub it. There we go. I'm liking that color. It's not too dark, but it's kind of like a gray green color. So it doesn't fight with my cake. All right. So this is getting close to done. Now I need to think of the details. I think I want there to be some fun sprinkles on my cake. So think about what kind of little details you want there to be. I can, this is dry enough, so I can go ahead and use my paintbrush. If this were still wet, what would happen is if I try to touch another color of paint, to make a sprinkle when it's still wet, it would just blend, it would just blob into it. But if it's dry, it should work. So I think I'll do all sorts of sprinkles, maybe some purple. Let me find purple on my palette here. If I can't get the watercolor to be dark enough, then I may need to use a marker. Actually, if you have colored markers or even like colored Sharpies, that would work really nice. You know what, actually, I do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some markers. That's just gonna be easier. I'm just getting all of my supplies out today. So I have a lot of different markers. Um, you can use these style or just use regular old Crayola markers, which we're, are fine too. So I'm gonna try some various color. Now this really bright yellow, I don't know if that's gonna show up. Actually, it does pretty good. I'm just making some sprinkles all over this cake. Wow, I didn't think that yellow would show up, but it shows up pretty good. So I'm gonna do some yellow. And let's see, how about this kind of light purple color? Well, there we go, gives it some good pop. And you can either do it as little dots or little lines, or both. So this cake is starting to come alive. Let's do some hot pink. These are neon Sharpies is what I'm using, but any color is fine. is starting to look fun and I really want some cake now. I don't know about you. And you know what? See how I have these red blobs and smears right here? Sometimes when you get a blooper like that in your art, just go ahead and incorporate it into the picture and pretend like you meant to do it. So if I have these red blobs that I didn't mean to be there, I'm just going to go ahead and get some more red on my paintbrush, water it down just a tad, and make it into polka dots. And now it looks like I have little bits of, I don't know, something delicious. Maybe those are strawberries or cherries or who knows. Or maybe it's just part of the frosting design. And now I've turned my mistake into part of my picture. All right, so I'm gonna keep going on my sprinkles. Ooh, I want mint green. I wanna kind of blend in 
or incorporate this color If you are using um, a paper like mine that wasn't really meant for watercolor and you find it buckling up like this, um, just let it dry a little bit and then stick it under a stack of heavy books and squash it down overnight and that should take care of it. So I'm getting some sprinkles. I think I want some bigger sprinkles. So I'm gonna do more like kind of little polka dots here and there. I don't wanna to go too crazy. Sometimes then, just take a break from your picture. Just take a step back and try to look at it from a little farther back just to see, because if you just stare at it up close too much, it's hard to really get a good idea of how it's turning out. So just even maybe turn away from it for a minute, close your eyes for a minute, walk away from it, and then come back up to it and see, okay, what looks good? What looks like it needs something? What do I want to change? What do I want to do? Um, and you can get a good idea that way. I think I want to add some excitement to my little um, frosting swirls here. I'm not sure exactly. Hmm. I'm just looking at my metallic markers to see if I have any fun colors. I think I might use like a silver actually. Why not? So I'm just going to add my paper's still a little wet, so I have to be careful not to tear it. it. Might be a little too wet to do that. I might even come in with a white later. Yeah, it's a little too wet. I'm gonna have to wait till that dries down a little bit. Yeah. this white gel pen. Never really used it, so. Oh, yeah, that works. I'm just adding a little highlight for fun. It's a little white highlight on the edge of my cherries. And I'll probably go back in once it's dry and do it once more to really pop it out because it's kind of hard to see that right now. And if it doesn't work so well with the pen, I may even come back in later. and Just touch that with a little bit of white tempera paint. So let's see, I think I wanna take a pink marker. I don't think I can cover, yeah. I was hoping I could maybe cover part of that Sharpie line and change it from black to pink, but it's really no big deal. Well, actually the metallic kind of works. softens that line a little bit anyway. And then I might do kind of the same thing. Let's see, what color do I want here? Might still be a little too wet and taking a risk. I hope I don't tear my paper. So I'm just going over my Sharpie line with a um, colored metallic 
marker. Give it a little more color, a little more pizzazz, and take some of the harshness off of that black line. Although I think the black line does look good too. Um, usually ha outlining parts of your drawing in black really does make it pop. So if I need to, I can always come back in and redo some of the black lines, bring them back to black. And if you're done with your cake, think about the background. You can start on the background as soon as you're ready, just making any sort of fun design that you want to. Maybe you want to do um, a window with some pretty curtains um, or some fun, funky wallpaper or some balloons. Maybe your cake is a party cake and you have some balloons going on. Who knows? think I have a red. Let's try this kind of rosy color. This might not look very good. That's all right. Okay, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I want to add to my cake before I do a quick background. And I can always come back to it later. It's not like I have to decide right this second. Hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in, and you can color or draw in a background. I'm just going to put a quick wash a color. When you're watercolor painting, actually any painting, not just watercolor, anytime you're painting and you do just a quick, uh, well it doesn't have to be quick even, but if you do kind of a thin glaze of a color, it's called a wash. I think I'm gonna do a wash of color and then do some designs maybe. We'll just see. I'm just trying to think of, now before you decide on your color, think of what looks good. If I have this bluish green color and red and pink and yellow and gray, what would look good behind all of these things? So I'm thinking maybe kind of a, a purple color. I hope I don't regret this decision. In fact, I may want to get some water on my paper before I put the paint on there. So I'm just going to wash my brush out before I start painting the background. And I'm just going to put water on it first. So that way, when I put the paint on, it goes on very light and it blends. So I don't have harsh, I don't want it to look like lines. I want it to just look like blended color. I'm being careful to try not to paint over my shapes. The stems I don't care about, but I don't want to have the paint blend into my cherries too much, so I'm trying to kind of go around those carefully. Oops, see, I already kind of... I may need to wait until the other colors dry a little bit more, because see how it's already pulling out some of the color. And I really don't want that to happen. It just depends what you want to have. If you want that to happen, it's fine, but... If not, you may want to wait till the other ones are dry because when you put water next to it, it'll cause those to bleed into each other.
Now you can even just leave it white. If you like the white background, that's fine. Just leave it white. I'm sure that looks pretty too. It just depends what you want. Now see when I put that um, bit of purple in there, it just blends and is really light because of all the water. And if a little bit of your colors bleed, don't even worry about it. It'll actually help make it look more unified in the end. And if you notice that it's starting to get really harsh lines, just add more water to that area because probably what happened was the paper dried before you got paint on it. really dark. So once you get to this point where it is almost done, take a good step back from it again and just decide if, think about what, what is it you want to really stand out about this picture and ask yourself, is it really standing out as much as I want it to? And if it's not, think about how you can make it stand out more. Now I want the cherries to stand out the most um, and they are pretty good. They're standing out pretty darn good. But what I could do to really make them pop is probably to go find a white paint or a better marker and really make those highlights bright white. Um, the other thing I notice, see how my background color is just very, very light purple and my cake is very light yellow. The stand is very light gray. The frosting is very light pink. Um, it's all kind of just mushing together. So I need to make something either lighter or darker in my picture um, or brighter. So lighter, darker or brighter. What I'll probably do is make this pink um, brighter. So you know what, I'm gonna just go ahead and pick a bright pink here. And I'm not seeing exactly the color I want. I'll just see if I can kind of mix one. I'm just kind of mixing pink and red together. And then I'm just gonna go in there and hope for the best, because I can always lighten it too. If um, it gets too dark, I can take that paper towel, as long as I don't let it dry too long, and I can just rub it out. But that's really starting to pop that a little bit. See how it's just kind of waking, waking up my picture. It is kind of covering my frosting a little bit. That's a bummer, or not my frosting, sorry, my sprinkles, but it is what it is. And I might lift a little color out, of, you know, out after I get this on, but I just feel like I need that pink frosting to be a little more exciting. Kind of running out of my color here, hopefully. Squeeze out the last bit. So I'm 
going to lift it just a little. But that really punched up. My picture. Sometimes too, just adding a little bit of white and a little bit of black in your picture will just really make all the difference. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit more and I'm going to add some white sprinkles. And I might even add a little bit of white once this dries to the tops of some of these frosting blobs. just feel like it needs something. You know what, I'm gonna give it some sparkler type candles. Don't ruin it here, but I'm gonna use a dark brown. Well, what color do I want? I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start out with a silver and then I can always go darker. Uh, silver's not gonna show up on that purple. Let's do a, um, let's do this color. It's just kind of a, like a bronze, like a brownish bronze. doing kind of a gold color for the flames because I don't want it to compete with the cherries. If I wanted to, I could actually make, yeah, I'm not sure if I love the top there. Sorry, I'm just thinking this through. So I'm going to just make this something else. I'm going to make these into just some cool little decorations. fun. And last but not least, I'm going to do some confetti falling in the background. Oh man, the sky's the limit with confetti. You can just have all sorts of colors. I've already got a lot of that dark pink, so I think I'll do See if this yellow shows up. And I like to do confetti as just little curved rectangles, like little strips of paper. And they could just kind of have waves and curves in them. Some could be straight. 
So this is kind of like a fancy party where somebody's dropping confetti in the background. And then just do some little squiggles. Make sure you have some that are close to the top of your page and the sides of your page. And even down around the cake. Don't forget that spot too. And you can even do some other colors if you wanted. Watercolor is really a good um, paint to go back over with pen and marker and ink. If you wanna kinda change things up a little bit. give it a pop. Getting close to calling this done. I think I'm gonna do one more little detail. Eh, I'm gonna leave those alone. I don't wanna overwork it. just going to go ahead and call this done. So don't forget if you are done to sign your name. It's um, best to sign it with a sharpie marker or a pen or something that's not going to smear if it gets wet and you can sign your name anywhere you want. Maybe like on um, somewhere on the cake platter would be kind of fun or just down in the corner of your art or anywhere that it blends in and looks cool to put your name. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. My paper tore a little bit, so I might just cut it. Um, if you don't use watercolor paper, um, that's the risk you run. Anytime you're working with um, water, is it might buckle or tear a little bit. It's just comes with the territory, no big deal. I'll just chop that off. Um, so, but there's my cake. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm sure I could fuss with it more, but you know what? Sometimes you just need to know when to be done and call it good because we can um, tend to just only look at our what we think are mistakes, but everyone else sees a beautiful picture. So if you have some mistakes, don't you even worry about those. Don't look at them. Just stand back and look at your beautiful cake and be proud of it. And please don't forget, I want to see your cakes. So uh, once you're done, pretty, pretty please take a picture and post it to uh, my Facebook page because I literally, that makes my day. All right, kids, thank you so much for joining. I hope you had fun with me today. I sure had fun with you and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.